Hello fellow pickers and stuff lovers. Welcome back to Alice Ops. I'm here. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, I apologize. As you know, stuff, life gets in the way and we haven't filmed anything recently. I found that after most of the pandemic kind of died down, we've been trying this summer to do all the things we couldn't do before. And on top of that, going to sales and sourcing, I don't know about you people, but that's just turned everything upside down to me. And I just, I can't get a grasp of time, it would seem. So anyways, I have a bit of news. I'm coming to you with a haul. There's going to be a lot of jewelry. And as well, next Tuesday, I'm having a live sale with the Kitschy Cat. So it's a live sale. I'm going to be selling vintage brooches. I would love to see you there, of course. Um, you know, you can be there just for support if, you know, have a look at what we've got. Um, what Kathy has is sort of a surprise at this point, so I'll let you know. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go see. Uh, but uh, so the sale is next Tuesday, the 23rd of August at 6 p.m. And uh, it's going to be on her channel. Her channel name is The Kitschy Cat. Kitschy with a K, cat with a K. Um, and the link is in the description probably down below for you, but in the description. So you just go to that link to go to her channel and hopefully we can have a bit of a first together, my first sale. Um, stuff is not going to be very expensive. I can tell you that. Um, it's okay. I've got a lot of jewelry. There's a lot to go around. So there's that. And, um, very cool thing that happened is that there is this one sale we usually go to uh, that is almost like a flea market uh, where a lot of vendors um, gather in a parking lot in Pierrefonds and a lot of them are not flea market vendors with vintage stuff kind of priced high or anything. It's a lot of people stuff from their homes. Um, usually the sale is not advertised. There's one sign that goes up on one um, thoroughfare and if you don't happen to go down that road or you miss the sign, you never know. But this time someone posted it on social media and my husband nearly went crazy. We love that sale. Um, and um, at that sale, we used to find um, this gentleman whose name is Jay, who had tons of good reselling stuff um, for really good prices. He doesn't sell there anymore, but we love that sale anyways, because it's one place where you have lots of different types of things. So the opportunities are pretty good, but I never thought I would find Lomonosov candlesticks. Porcelain made in in Russia uh, and uh, this pattern I believe is called cobalt net. It's uh, very sought after porcelain, um, very fine, very well made and um, all handmade and and beautiful and very collectible. Had this one stall uh, where I wasn't sure I'm not very familiar with it. So I wasn't sure that this was the uh, the logo for the company. But at the same time, I said to myself, I, I think that's what it is. I asked the stall holder how much it would be. And she said two. And she hands me the other candlesticks because I had one in my hand. And I thought she meant two, like there were two of them. Ah, yes, I said, but the, the price? She was like, two. I mean, unless you want to give me more. It's two dollars. So I was very happy and 
looked up online and they go for about maybe a hundred dollars. Look out for Lomonosov. And then I went to this one stall where they had some porcelain that I knew about. Um, the pattern, I believe, is called Evesham Gold because of the gold rims. Um, and it is uh, Royal Worcester and very nice China made in England. Um, that pattern is, is pretty sought after. It's not tons of money, but I bought everything they had for $20. And then the woman at the stall was telling me because the, the, the husband seemed to be a little bit overcome with emotion and he kept kind of going to her going but that's our best stuff here are you sure you want to let it go for 20 bucks and he was like this stuff was my mom's and it was sort of a thing and she kept coming back to me going no no it's okay it's fine we have to get rid of this stuff so i said no but you know i understand um i said here's 25 just you know, to let you know I appreciate, you know, and she was like, oh, you're such a nice lady, you know, it's just, it's been hard for my husband, he lost his mother last year, I lost my father last year, and, you know, you, you have to understand people's circumstances, it's completely okay, he's thinking this is good china, and it meant a lot to me, I, I don't want to let it go for pennies, you know, um, and, you know, I might have paid up a little bit more, but not too much, because, you know, I think I saw the, the teapot uh, go for about $50. But, you know, you never know. When you have yours up for sale, you might end up just getting 40 or I don't know. You might price it down a little bit because eventually you want it to go. Um, so anyways, I got this. I got about 8 or 10 teacups and saucers. Um, I got uh, milk jug, uh, sugar, one bowl, um, and lots of dessert plates and things like that. So we'll see what happens, but it's always nice for me to get um, china that is collectible, that I know there'll be a market for. Um, yeah, so that was fun. We found which is always good to find, uh, especially with the, uh, the manual. Um, Wii Sports is usually about $15 shipped or so. Uh, I paid $2 for it. This is a, a consistent thing. And, and some of those are nice to have, just things that you can go, I know it will sell. I know it's going to bring in about that much. There you go. Because then you have some things that you're not so sure when they will sell and if they will sell and if you're going to have to play with the price. Some jewelry that I got there. There was a tub of jewelry. And um, they were all priced like the necklaces were a dollar and a quarter and the rest, uh, earrings and brooches, were 50 cents each. So I went through the jewelry and just put aside what I didn't want and took the rest, basically. There was a lot of vintage jewelry, which I don't usually see anywhere. And I thought to myself, this is the kind of thing where, you know, sometimes I'll go to a, an estate sale or a garage sale and the person with a tub of jewelry will go, you should have seen what we had this morning first thing. A person came in and they bought half the tub. And you're going, I don't want to know that. Because you can't get there at 8 o'clock for every sale, right? The second sale is already going to be 8.30 by the time I get there, you know, so... And this time I felt like I was the person. I got to have the job. So um, that was great. We hadn't gotten there early, but not overly so. I think the sale started at 8. We were there at like 20 to 8. 
uh, and there were a few people shopping maybe, but you know, we, we were one of the first ones there picking up what we wanted. So 50 cents, I don't have to think long and just make a big pile of whatever I want. <clears throat> I'm going to show you some of the stuff we got, but I still have a lot of jewelry that I'm not showing in this video. I will do another video and you can see it all there. Uh, this is marked. I can't really make it out. I tried yesterday. It looks like Orema. Anyways, I will figure it out, but it is marked um, for a brand, so that's neat. I like the sort of enamel sheen to it. I really like the color. There isn't so much purple out there, so these were fun and a little different. <clears throat> this very vintage iridescent um, brooch um, is not marked, but very of its time. Um, these, just because they're well made, they're rhinestone. I believe they are marked as well. Yeah, I think maybe it says Sherman. So it would be good if it's Sherman. It's a good brand. People buy it. It is a skunk with lots of rhinestones on its back, as skunks usually are, you know, uh, in the wild. Um, I just thought that was a, a very cute and different kind of animal to find. I don't think it's marked anything. These are not marked any. Oh, yes, they are marked something. I think they're marked Continental. It's not a brand as far as I've seen that sells super well, but they are vintage. Um, I love the shape. Very glamorous. Speaks for itself. Just a beautiful shade of blue. So these will be fun as well. I found this brooch. I can't believe there's nothing missing on it. Um, it's not signed, but it's numbered. To me, it looked like something that that should be signed, that should have a brand, a designer. It's it's still very, very sparkly. It's really good quality. Um, you can tell by the way it's constructed that it's good quality. So anyways, 50 cents. Here is a loop. It's always fun to get jewelry that has a function. People are just, you know, sometimes they don't feel as bad buying that because it's something that also does a thing. Um, but also just very pretty and, you know, because it wasn't expensive. I'm gonna try that. Oh, I love this one. This one I may be keeping for a little while before I try and sell it. I love the design. It's, um, it's really, as far as I can tell, a reproduction from a Victorian brooch. Um, I love the theme um, that is like a star, a sun, um, just uh, very symbolic in a way, and um, love that it is very delicate. It's well constructed, um, and I always wanted to have something like that, but of course the Victorian ones are usually in gold and usually pricier. Um, so, but this kind of does the trick so yeah love this because it reminds me of antique brooches I love that it's a theme it's a horse theme um, I love that the uh, the horse head is in sort of relief inside and and is augmented by that um, convex uh, glass on it so I think that'll be a good seller um, this to me is exceptional. Uh, very Egyptian revival, and I think we're talking about the 20s or 30s with this brooch right now. Love the way the glass is faceted very, very well. Um, love that there are little eyes, uh, little glass eyes on him. Um, scarabs and Egyptian related things sometimes do very well. And um, yeah, it was very in in those days. So it's really part of a, a trend 
that was in those days. It's not marked or anything, but lovely. I'm, I'm looking forward to selling that. Uh, I also got a frightfully tall um, uh, Monster High doll, whose name I think is Gulia, something like that. I have sold her before. These are de deceptively uh, simple. You would think, but she's still a plastic tall, right? She's a lot taller than the usual um, Monster High dolls, which are maybe here. And um, <clears throat> usually I'll sell those between maybe 30 and 40, 45 dollars. They're collectible. And this one has her shoes, has her earrings and her tiara, as we all do. We all have tiaras. I mean, you might call it a hair clip, but still a tiara. Um, and um, it was 50 cents. So that was at a garage sale we went to afterwards. Um, but uh, at the Pierrefonds sale, uh, my husband also picked up this Game Boy. Uh, and it does work. So that was fun. We'll see what we can get on that. But always collectible, always a good price. I can't remember how much he paid for it. I'm not sure he said. I think it was five dollars. So five dollars to more dollars. <laughs> it's good. Um, very, very briefly, I'm... Oh gosh. The, the perfume. I haven't shown you any of the perfume. Well, I'm, I'll show you some, but there'll be another video coming out. Well, one of those things that I picked up was a Chloe box of powder. And um, Chloe is a good perfume thing, but this was sold with a case in which you would put, I think, your lingerie, that sort of thing. So it's still all in the case, never open, never anything. And here's the box of powder. I won't necessarily take it out. It's a box of powder, but it's unopened, untouched, still sealed. And those can go upwards of maybe $70, maybe $100. Powder, powder is something to pick up. Um, they had some other cosmetics. Um, some other Chloe mm, pieces, but they were like shampoo and lotion. And sometimes shampoo and lotion, if it's been sitting there, I don't know how great it's going to be. And um, I know that powder sells very well, so we went with that. This is just a, a, a little, little uh, snippet of perfumes we picked up. And therefore, I will tell you that we stopped at this stall where there were a few vintage perfumes and we were told that they were five dollars each. I got Escape because I used to wear that, um, but it's still being produced. It, it's probably not something I would sell because it's about mm, $25 shipped and then you can't ship it air and basically I'm gonna make 10 bucks on it. It's It can still be fine but I happen to like this so I'm going to keep it and use it. Poison uh, sells very well and I can't really remember how much but for something like this, I would think I could still get like 40 to $50. Um, I think it's, uh, this one's Eau de Toilette. It's not Eau de Parfum, but all the same. Uh, and um, for $5, yeah, I'm going to make some money on that. <laughs> what was funny is that before I went to that stall, my husband had gone to that stall and we meet up in between and he's like, oh, you got some perfume. He's like, I got all the good perfume. And I'm like, no, I got all the good perfume. <laughs> he got Amarige de Givenchy, excellent seller. 
I don't know, upwards of $60 maybe? Something around that, but this is the same place I got the, the poison from. So I was like, oh, he's like, I didn't see that. And he got a Chanel gift box with different names, different, different, uh, different scents. So and that was five dollars as well. So I'm I'm just so thrilled. There's such fun things to sell. Ah, okay. Little preview of the jewelry I'm going to try and flog on Tuesday. On Tuesday for our live sale, I will have this brooch. I'm going to set it down on the table. I don't know why I'm holding it. Um, and uh, this is a mid-century um, crazy brooch. I love the design. I love that it is so from another era and that it's slightly space age and atomic. A lot of fun. I've never seen another one like it. It's large. It's, it's telling people something. And it has the wonderful golden flecks in it that is like lapis lazuli. So there you are. Then I've got these brooches that I got at the, uh, the Pierre Foncel that we went to last weekend, well this weekend. Um, with French bulldogs on them, exquisitely painted. Um, I just thought I have to include that if someone is a fan of French bulldogs or bulldogs in general, or these are painted with a lot of detail and care, and you may just want this on your lapel. They're even signed. And one other thing that I will be having at the sale is this brooch, which represents Virgo in all her beauty. I thought she was very hippie, very 1960s, early 70s. She's an interesting brooch because she's, she's a person, but she reflects a whole, um, a whole, she's a symbol of the Virgo with all their attributes and she's she's holding flowers she's in a field someplace being all summery and she's still on her original card which was kind of fun and there we are for this again my first live sale is next Tuesday evening at six o'clock that's Tuesday the 23rd of August and I'm going to have the sale on Kathy's channel which is the kitschy cat and take a look at the link for her channel in the description. I hope to see you there because it's going to be exciting and it's going to be fun just for the interaction with everybody and hope to see you there and more more um, videos on jewelry etc coming up so I hope you're having an excellent summer and keep on picking.